Would you like to see the history of the Marcus Samuels built the biggest oil company in the world? So definitely watch today's video. In the annals of business history, there are few tales as captivating and transformative as that of Marcus Samuel and the rise of Royal Dutch Shell. Born amidst the clamor of Victorian London, Marcus Samuel emerged as a visionary entrepreneur whose audacious spirit and pioneering vision would reshape the landscape of the oil industry forever. From humble beginnings to the helm of the world's largest oil company, his journey is a testament to the power of ingenuity, perseverance, and unwavering belief in the pursuit of one's dreams. It was an era defined by rapid industrialization. Welcome to Money Doc TV, a channel dedicated to entrepreneurs who risked it all to create today's most iconic brands. Let's get started. In the heart of Victorian London, amid Amidst the bustling streets and the cacophony of industrial revolution, there stood a modest trading business with ambitions as vast as the ocean itself. This was the humble beginning of what would evolve into the behemoth of the oil industry, Royal Dutch Shell, a name synonymous with power, innovation, and global reach. And at the helm of this remarkable journey was none other than Marcus Samuel, a visionary entrepreneur whose audacious spirit would shape the course of history. Born into a family of merchants in 1853, Marcus Samuel inherited a legacy of trade and commerce. From a young age, he displayed an insatiable curiosity and an innate flair for business. With the advent of the petroleum age, Marcus recognized the boundless potential of this new commodity and set his sights on conquering the lucrative oil trade. The 1890s witnessed oil's rise as the fuel of the future, but transporting it was a headache. Leaky barrels wasted space and posed fire hazards. Marcus, barely in his 20s, envisioned a safer, more efficient solution. In 1892, Marcus Samuel seized upon a revolutionary idea that would transform the oil industry forever, the transportation of oil in bulk quantities via ships. Up until then, oil had been transported in cumbersome barrels, a slow and inefficient process fraught with logistical challenges. Marcus envisioned a fleet of purpose-built tankers capable of carrying vast quantities of oil across the seas, streamlining the supply chain and revolutionizing the industry. He designed revolutionary double-hulled tankers, christened them with names like Murex and Pecton, after seashells, and secured a groundbreaking deal with the Rothschilds to transport kerosene across the vast Suez Canal. In the late 19th century, the seeds of what would become Royal Dutch Shell were sown in the competitive landscape of the burgeoning oil industry. In 1878, in the bustling metropolis of London, Marcus Samuel, a young entrepreneur with a keen eye for opportunity, inherited his father's import-export business. Among its eclectic ventures, the business included the importation of oriental shells, hence the moniker that would later become synonymous with petroleum magnate, Shell. Fueled by ambition and foresight, Marcus Samuel embarked on a transformative journey. Recognizing the rising demand for illuminating fuel, he ventured into the kerosene trade as a sideline. In 1892, he took a bold leap forward by initiating tanker operations to the Far East, laying the groundwork for future endeavors. By 1896, Samuel had established oil depots and soon thereafter oil wells and refineries in Borneo, a move that would significantly bolster his presence in the industry. In 1897, Marcus Samuel formalized his oil interests with the creation of the Shell Transport and Trading Company, Limited. This marked the genesis of a corporate entity that would soon become a titan in the global oil arena. Over the ensuing decade, Samuel's ambition knew no bounds as he orchestrated contracts for petroleum supplies across Sumatra, Texas, Romania, and beyond. Marcus Samuel's strategic vision and relentless pursuit of expansion propelled Shell into uncharted territories, solidifying its foothold as a formidable player in the oil trade. Meanwhile, across the seas in 1890, a consortium of Dutch financiers, businessmen, and former colonial administrators converged to form the Koninklijke Nederlandse Machapi Tot Exploitatie van Petroleumbronnen in Nederland. Netherlands, India, or the Royal Dutch Company for Exploitation of Oil Wells in the Dutch Indies. Under the astute leadership of Hendrik W. A. de Terding, the company embarked on a journey of exploration and innovation. In 1892, Royal Dutch made significant strides by developing its first pipeline and refinery in Sumatra, tapping into the rich oil fields of the region. With a keen focus on infrastructure development, Royal Dutch expanded its operations, laying the groundwork for future growth. By 1896, under de Terding's guidance, the company commenced construction of tankers and storage facilities, establishing a robust sales organization to support its burgeoning operations. As the 19th century drew to a close, the stage was set for a monumental merger between two industry titans. In 1903, Royal Dutch and Shell took the first steps towards integration by consolidating their distributing and sales operations.
operations in the Far East. Four years later, in 1907, the historic merger between the two rival organizations gave birth to the Royal Dutch Shell Group. In 1903, Royal Dutch and Shell took their initial steps towards merging by integrating their distribution and sales operations, particularly focusing on Far East sales and East Indies production. By 1907, the merger was formalized, establishing the Royal Dutch Shell Group with both parent companies at the helm and with Deterting appointed as the general managing director of the group. By 1913, through strategic acquisitions and expansions, the combined entities had ascended to a prominent position within the global oil industry. They had acquired production assets in diverse regions such as Romania, Russia, Iraq, Egypt, Venezuela, Mexico, California, and Oklahoma, while also expanding their sales operations across Europe, Asia, Australia, Africa, and North and South America. Under the joint leadership of Marcus Samuel and Hendrik de Terting, the Royal Dutch Shell Group ascended to unprecedented heights, expanding its global footprint and solidifying its position as a dominant force in the oil industry. From the Middle East to Africa, from the North Sea to North America, the group's relentless pursuit of new reserves and innovative technologies propelled it to the forefront of the global oil trade. Through visionary leadership, strategic foresight, and unwavering determination, Marcus Samuel and Hendrik de Terting laid the foundation for what would become one of the largest and most influential corporations in the world, Royal Dutch Shell. Their legacy continues to endure, shaping the trajectory of the energy industry and inspiring future generations of innovators and entrepreneurs. Royal Dutch Shell PLC stands as a unified, publicly traded petroleum giant, boasting its status as one of the largest corporations globally. With operations spanning over 90 countries, the company is deeply entrenched in every facet of the crude oil and natural gas industry, from exploration and production to refining and marketing. Additionally, it plays a significant role in supplying chemical feedstocks to various industries. The company's headquarters are situated in The Hague, Netherlands. Established in 2005 through the reorganization of the Royal Dutch Shell Group, Royal Dutch Shell emerged as a unified entity. Prior to this reformation, the Royal Dutch Shell Group had been governed by two parent companies, NV Koninklijke Nederlandse Petroleum Matchapi, Royal Dutch Petroleum Company Limited, based in The Hague, and Shell Transport and Trading Company, PLC, headquartered in London. Below these parent companies operated numerous subsidiaries globally, with Shell Oil Company, SOC, founded in 1922, standing as the principal American subsidiary and still retaining its position as Royal Dutch Shell's largest subsidiary. Throughout the 20th century, the group remained relentless in its pursuit of new oil and gas reserves. Expanding its operations from the Middle East to Africa and from the North Sea to North America, the company conducted drilling activities in the Gulf of Mexico and extracted oil sands in Alberta, Canada. However, in 2004, Royal Dutch Shell faced a significant setback when it announced a serious overestimation of its proven oil and gas reserves. Subsequent revised estimates, released over the following year, saw the company's reserve estimates slashed by as much as 40%. This dramatic reduction in figures led to a devaluation of the company's stock, prompting shareholders to demand a more transparent and accountable corporate structure. In response to these challenges, in 2005, the century-old Royal Dutch Shell Group was dissolved, giving way to the establishment of a single, unified company. This new entity wasted no time in announcing an ambitious investment program aimed at rebuilding its oil and gas reserves through increased exploration and production activities. In 2015, Royal Dutch Shell further solidified its position in the energy market by agreeing to acquire the BG Group, a prominent producer of liquefied natural gas (LNG). This strategic move aimed to bolster its standing as one of the leading players in the burgeoning LNG industry, marking yet another milestone in the company's storied history of growth and adaptation to changing market dynamics. Post-war, Shell rode the oil boom, becoming a household name with its distinctive red and yellow pectin logo. They sponsored Formula One races, their logo emblazoned on racing cars, a testament to their spirit of innovation and speed. From its humble origins as a small trading business in Victorian London, to its current status as the largest oil company in the world, Shell's journey is a testament to the transformative power of vision, perseverance, and unwavering commitment to excellence. Under the visionary leadership of Marcus Samuel, Shell emerged as a trailblazer in the oil industry, pioneering revolutionary technologies and sustainable practices long before they became mainstream. We really hope you enjoyed today's video. How this kid built the biggest oil company in the world. Be sure to leave a like and comment below on what you loved about our video. Make sure you subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon to never miss another great video. Until next time, we look forward to seeing you in our next video. Remember, no dream is too big.